What's up, everyone? Ricky here from RPI, joined by... Daniel. I'm pretty sure they know we're from RPI. I mean, it says RPI at the bottom of the screen, you know, and it's, it says what the video is. It's part of the catchphrase. It's just natural now. I don't... I don't really think it's that natural. It is for me. Oh, okay, sure, whatever. You're just weird. Maybe. Yeah. But that is beside the point. As you can see, we got some Halo 5 Guardians gameplay going on in the background as we talk. It's uh, gameplay from Warzone. I don't remember the maps right now. So, yeah. <laughs> but what we're talking about today is Halo 5 campaign. What we thought about it. So, fair warning, spoilers ahead. Much spoilers. I still think we should put, we should have put campaign game, campaign gameplay. <laughs> campaign. Yeah. <laughs> campaign. We should put campaign in the background. Yeah, but that that that'd be too pre predictable. What? <laughs> It'd be too predictable. I, I just love the silence inside the, uh... Inside, it, the, inside the entire world. <laughs> yeah. It'd be too predictable. <laughs> yeah, it'd be too predictable. Huh, they're talking about the campaign. So let's throw some Warzone in the background. Yeah. It's perfect. No, it All really right, is. Whatever. But before we get into, like, the story mode, what we thought of the characters and stuff, I just have one thing to say. There are spoilers. I thought I already said that, you did. but we'll say it again. There are spoilers. Now, if you don't want to be spoiled, get off this video. Sorry. And leave <laughs> the next three seconds, because I'm about to say, Snape kills Dumbledore. <gasps> Danny. Oh. <laughs> Anyways, so before we talk really about uh, the, the characters and what we thought about them and the story mode in general and the direction that it took... I just want to say that the Promethean weapons, absolutely amazing in this game. Yes, I I, I was a firm disbeliever in them in Halo 4. They and do not exist. You liked them in Halo 4. I did. I didn't. I don't like them anymore because Halo 5 really just upped them. So you don't like them anymore? Is that what you just said? I don't like them in Halo 4 anymore compared okay. to the Halo oh, 5 okay. versions. So that makes more sense. Because so once I got a hand... The suppressor, absolutely yeah. love using that gun. Um, and, and a lot of the Covenant weapons, too. I'll pick them up and be like, yeah, I'll use this. Yeah. And for the most part, when you're throughout the campaign, you kind of have to pick up all these other weapons. Yeah, so it's nice that they work. Them. Yeah. So it's nice that they work so well uh, in comparison to the UNSC counter counterparts, because I like the UNSC weapons a lot. Right. I'd rather go in with my assault rifle, blazing, battle rifle, all that stuff. You know, I've always preferred the Covenant weapons. Yeah. Teaching their own, I guess. But I feel like 343 really brought up the level of the other of the UNSC counterparts with the Covenant and Promethean weapons and really made them more enjoyable to play. Or, or not to play, to use. Um, I also like the the uh, animation, all the glowing stuff on the Promethean weapons. That looks really cool. Yeah, I, the scatter shot when zoomed in looks amazing. It does. I like the scatter shot zoomed in. The bolt shot has a very nice change to it. Instead of a shotgun charge up, that no longer exists. Thank fires, God. Right? Fires three shots. The light rifle, absolutely amazing now. Just a single shot weapon, but when scoped in, much more powerful. Mm. Absolutely just a great job there with the Promethean weapons. Really uh, upping them and making them more Incineration wantable. cannon, you have to hold down to charge it. I would say that's the one thing... I wish they didn't change. That in the binary rifle kind of shoots like a beam. Yeah, I saw that. But I like, believe. it's a brief beam. It's not like the focus rifle. Yeah. I, I had to do the sound effect. But it's just like, the, the binary rifle is like just a brief beam real quick. I but, gotta say, I'm not a big fan of the binary rifle. I'm still fine with the incineration cannon because you don't have to charge it. Yeah, exactly. So. But the binary rifle, I'm not a big fan of that this time, actually. Yeah. I was never a big fan of snipers in general, so... Fair enough. I like the beam rifle. That. Beam rifle's good. But yeah, so that I just had to throw that out there yeah. real quick. And while we're on the subject of Prometheans, want to talk about the knights? The Promethean knights? Oh yeah, I'm much stronger now. They, It is quite a challenge to face them. And you only face them in normal. Yeah, and I face them in normal difficulty, and it takes a lot. Um, wait, it tanked a turret. <laughs> I, I fired a whole machine gun turret into one, and... <laughs> It barely did anything. Yeah. Um, I know you have to hit like the weak parts to really yeah, do a also lot. Also, your aim but, might have influenced. Yeah, that could be part of it too. But I have to say they're a lot stronger now. I like them. I like the Prometheans more as an enemy now. They feel more like a, more like a threat this time around. Yeah. 
Especially the Promethean Warriors. Those guys are cool. But let's let's actually start with the... Uh, or not start, but continue on with all the characters. Okay, which character first? We can just sum up Blue Team in, as one, right? Yeah, definitely. Awesome! Yep. <laughs> Love Blue Team. Um, We've read the books. A book. <laughs> <laughs> He's read one book. Yes. I've read more. Yes. Uh, But I've... Like Blue Team. Yeah. I've, well, the I've, book I read had... Those, you, yeah, along with the other Spartans. First Strike? The first Flint? Strike, yeah. yeah. Uh, so that was... With that the, was a good one. But that had the Battle of Reach in it. It had when they're fighting on the Elephant Station. Elephant uh, Station? It wasn't Elephant, but it was, <laughs> it was something else. Because I, I remember the Sergeant Johnson made a joke. He's like, is, wait, wait, an Elephant Station? Because it was something that sounded like Elephant. Oh, oh, I know what you're talking about. Uh, at the end of the book. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and the whole, yeah. That's the whole reason it was called First Strike, Ricky. Yeah, yeah, because they struck the station that was going to go towards Earth right. in the book. Yeah. But I absolutely love that they introdu or reintroduced. reintroduced well, but introduction. In the game. Yeah, first time in the game. Fred, Linda, and uh, Kelly. Kelly. Thank you. Uh, Fred definitely has some really cool armor. Mm -hmm. And I liked Fred's character in the book, too. Yeah. Um, so that, that was cool to see all of them in action. What did you think of Fireteam Osiris? Okay, I'd like to say first off, I've always loved Buck. <laughs> ODST, loved Buck. He was in Reach, you didn't believe me. I, I kind of forgot. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I've always loved Buck. So there's that. And uh, you don't know that much about Locke. Because you, you still haven't seen Nightfall. I have not seen Nightfall, You no. haven't seen Nightfall. I mean, well, I get he was an Oni operative and that he was an assassin. And... I mean, that's all I really need to know. That's he was not good what enough he was to doing be a Spartan. Nightfall. It doesn't matter. I'll watch it another time. You should really watch Nightfall. Even without Nightfall, I thought Locke was a pretty good character. Well, you should watch it tonight. Still, so. maybe we'll see. Um, so Locke, what do you think of Locke? First off, well, I've all, I've loved his character ever since Nightfall. Okay. So I will say that I'm glad he was in this game. Uh, <laughs> if it wasn't for the game, he wouldn't be in Nightfall. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, but uh, I I do. I don't know, I, I just love his personality. Always have. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, I like how he's uh, very centered around his team and wants to help him out. Like when he went right. back for Buck, that was cool. Twice. Twice. Yes, yeah. they're counting now. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yes, yes. Um, Buck was pretty cool, obviously. I loved yeah. him in ODST. Don't remember him in Reach, but You were whatever. escorting him. We were escorting Buck? Yes. He was, he was flying a pelican. Oh, okay. All right, sure. Uh, loved him in ODST. It was great to see him as a Spartan this time. And then uh, Tanahaka and I can't remember what the did, other what one. What did you say? Tanahaka. Tanaka. Tanaka. Thank you. And Tana Vale. And Vale. 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 Yes, they're pretty cool. I mean, it was all right. Uh, I think there was one part in the campaign where they all like gathered around before they're going to uh, uh, drop it on the Sun Hilly City or whatever. Yeah. Where the Guardian was coming out from. Right. And then they're all like, hey, let's say a word or whatever. For, yeah. Like, good luck. I was like, that seems a little out of place. And, like, they, they never really gave any, like, clues that they would ever do something like this or that. I don't know. It you, just seems slightly out of place. Character? Yeah, I, I was like, that seems a little forced. Like, uh, I, but it was cool. I liked the moment. It was like, it seems a little forced, uh, but it, it unified the team I, more. I think they did that only to say, like, hey... They're not blue team, but they're still a team. See, that's what I liked when Cortana... And we're jumping all over the campaign at this oh, point, yeah. guys. Cortana, w when she was taunting... Okay, well, all right. First off, Cortana's back. Oh, yeah. She, she lived. She lives! E e if they're watching this, they probably played the campaign. Some cause... people probably are probably just like, I just want to hear what they want to say. Oh, because, yeah, I'm sure. Because people love hearing our voices. Um, so Cortana's back. What would you think of that? First off, do you think she should have stayed dead? I, do you think she should have... Well, she was obviously brought back, but do you think she should have been brought back in this way or a different way? I, I... And I'm going to be firm on this point right here until maybe the next Halo, and <laughs> if they do something else. But the end of Halo 4 was very emotional for players. The death of Cortana. And that was a huge stepping point in, you know, like, Chief's story. Development. Development. this character, yeah. And it's just like, they had that major character die who's been there from the beginning. And it's just, 
they just brought it back in the next game. I felt that was kind of just ruining what they did. <laughs> However, they did do more like Cortana and Chief are now enemies. But I, I, I still stand firm that I don't feel Cortana should have came back. But if they do something more in the next game, then I will t withdraw my point. But for now, I'm sticking on the point Cortana was a bad choice. Okay. I do love her character design, though. Character she does look nice. really nice. Yeah. But uh, the thing is, with Cortana, I'm glad they brought her back this way. Because if Chief... Because I originally, when they first showed that Guardian, the War Sphinx, when it first came out, which looked... The very first trailer, that teaser trailer for Halo Xbox One. Oh, that that was the one where Chief was wearing the, the robe. In the desert, he's he wearing never, the robe. He never wore the he never, robe. Yeah, he never wore the robe. The, the Guardian War Sphinx looks completely different. Um... Which, I, that's fine, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I had no complaints there. His visor was still cracked, though, which was... So at least they kept that part. But he's holding the chip. So everyone's like, oh, he's going after Cortana. Maybe he's going to find a way to bring her back and restore her. So I'm glad they didn't go with the route of Chief going rogue to restore Cortana. And that Cortana kind of came back on her own, but then was influenced by the Forerunners. And then she went down her yeah. evil path, which... By the way, brilliant move on 343's part, because in my opinion, we still get to we, we still get the loss of Cortana, um, because the Cortana that we knew yeah. is gone. We we can for now. We might there might be some bit of her left because she wanted she's doing this yeah. all for John is what is her. No, she's not doing it for John, but she wants John to be there with her. Yes, that's it. Yeah, she wants John to. See what she's done. And see that she's right. Yes. She's stroking her own ego. Yeah, essentially. Hey, she's based off Halsey, so yes. can, yeah. can you blame her? Fair enough, yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I just like the direction the story's going with that. The fact that Cortana's now evil. We still get to keep that memory of the good Cortana. Evil who's now point of view. Okay, yes, <laughs> I'm just saying it for the sake of this. Cortana has a very extremist view of using the Guardian's to take over to take the mantle of responsibility to take the mantle of responsibility yes thank you i co completely called that by yeah the way. <laughs> you did when we were playing the game i was playing it danny was just watching. sitting there I was, watching I, well, I had jury duty in the morning yeah it was like it was two in the morning when, when i when i finished yeah, yeah and it, it's like i really need to sleep <laughs> you were playing halo and yeah. it's like kind of stay with but yeah i was like you called a lot of the points i did call i mean because I don't know. Things don't surprise me <laughs> in games a lot. I will say. But the thing is, I wouldn't have expected you. I would never have seen those things coming. I have no idea how you could have seen that because <laughs> it's funny. You were like, "What if Buck's dead? What if Buck dies yeah. or something?" Yeah, I know. I, didn't... I was like, "Danny, don't say that." But there <laughs> were points in the story where it looked like he might die. <laughs> well, here's the thing, because the way they said it, like Buck gets the next round when he, when this is all done, it's just like that's just a way to like say. Ouch, he's, he's gonna die. But then he, but then he was like, "I'll buy the whole bar." It's like, "Oh no, he'll be fine." No. Oh. <laughs> and then with the arbiter too, I was like, "Hey, Danny, the arbiter's gonna die." And I said, You're "No, right. I said <laughs> no." <laughs> and let me let me say something. I've always preferred elites. I, I played Halo Three. That was my first Halo. That was your first Halo as well. Yes. And uh, we played co-op campaign, and A Ricky <laughs> being first player was Chief, and I was the Arbiter. Arbiter. Arbiter! <laughs> but that was the Arbiter, and mm -hmm. I just grew attached to the Elites. And... Can I go on a rant about the Arbiter? Sure, go for it. Uh, he sucks. <laughs> His character design is terrible. His armor was so much better back in Halo 3. You done? Yeah. <laughs> okay. It was my rant. I, I can tell. Um, I'm sorry you feel that way. To be honest... I, did you ever see what he looks like in the Master Chief collection? Because that's what his armor looks like. Uh, all right, hold on. So the armor in his Master Chief collection, it's like this golden armor. It looks all nice. When was he in the Master Chief collection? It, it's at the very beginning cutscene of Halo 2 Anniversary. Oh, Because uh, it shows Locke and he's talking with Arbiter. It, it's an extra scene that 343 added in. You know I didn't play Master Chief collection. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, um, but the Arbiter's got this nice golden armor. It looks sleek. It looks clean now is, wait, is the golden armor from the comics 
maybe. I didn't care for that either. Okay. But it looks sleek and clean. In Halo 5 Guardians, he's missing, like, on his left arm. The whole armor is gone. Yeah. It's just his bare arm. Um, and it's all torn up and shattered and, and all, like, war-torn and stuff. So maybe that's why you didn't really care for it, because it's all, like, war-torn? I didn't care for the gold armor either. Oh, okay. Well, never mind then. Um, hmm. I, don't, oh. <laughs> I just felt the armor looked so cool. What did you think about, uh... What's his name? I don't know. Joel? Joel. Oh. What? <laughs> yeah. Him dying in the first mission. Here's the thing. That was a major villain in Spartan Ops. Yes. And it was the hand of the didact. Yes. The well, self-proclaimed hand of the didact. Yeah, well. <laughs> and it's just, he was such a major enemy in a minor series. And yes. I just felt that his end was anticlimactic. You wanted more. I wanted more. I'm okay. Would you have preferred him living on to Halo 6 and dying in 6 instead of 5? No. What okay. I would have preferred... Or like halfway through the campaign? Uh... Actually, a bit more than halfway. Uh, when uh, they were on San Helis. Yeah. And they were fighting the remains of the Covenant. Would have preferred if he died there. Against the Arbiter? Against the Arbiter. That would have been cool. Like they had an epic sword battle or something? Yeah, yeah. That would have been cool. Because it's like... They don't know who the head of the co we don't know who the head of the covenant is through the entire game. We can assume that. All right. Hmm. Yeah. They're. Hmm. And it's like they. What? They just have to kill the troops there, and then they win, because the leader's already dead. It's probably hmm, their main leader is gone, but what probably happened was a bunch of like all the second in commands all got together and. and like a war council, yeah. essentially, is probably what's the temporary head of the Covenant at the moment. It, exactly, and it's like, so what, he just has to kill the troops on the planet and then they win the war? I just thought that was too easy. It wasn't that... What I think it was more of, um... It wasn't necessarily the war being over, but more like the war on San Hilly being over. Yeah. I, for, I think that's the home name. The, the, home, the home world San planet, Hilly. San Hilly, something like that. Um, or maybe it was San Helios. It was San Helios. That's okay. the name of the planet. Okay, yeah, I'm trying to say the but planet. The so but the swords of San Helios were Yeah, there. Yeah, um, so... I think that was more for San Helios. Just centered around San Helios and not throughout. Because obviously, the Covenant, or what's left of it at this point, because for the most part, their political structure is gone. Their religious mm -hmm. structure is barely holding on. Just the end of the Night Act. <laughs> yeah, but it, and then that got wiped out. Yeah, because the... Prometheans, uh, just turn their back on them. Yeah. By the way, I love stories that have, like, big world building, big consequence stuff. Yeah. So, which is why I like One Piece, because there's a whole, it's like the whole world is included, not just the main characters. Um, but the way they, the way 343 took the whole universe and, like, showed what was going on, I love the fact that pretty much after the war, because of the way things played out, humanity became, like, the number one the, the number one guys in the universe, and then it became like Covenant, San Helios, San Helios, Independent, Hilly, colonies, independent all over. colonies. I like that whole thing. Yeah. Um. And uh, it was it was cool to see what had happened to the Covenant throughout this. It, it's funny whole you say you like that right? trilogy because I like that too. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons I like Fallout so much. <laughs> and you hate that game. I don't hate it. I just refuse to play. <laughs> I have a strong dislike towards it. You refuse it. to try it. I've already tried it. You tried it for like two seconds. We we can... we'll, 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 it's not important right now. Yeah, but getting back to to Halo, uh, I like the fact that uh, first off, the Covenant like just being in destroyed remains and everything, but still trying to fight for control of the galaxy again. Then you got the Prometheans, you got the San Hel the San Helis, you got the humans. Independent colonies. It's all just really great, and I have to say, three four three handled that very well. I'm very interested to see what happens in Halo Six. Oh, I want to see what happens in Halo Six. I'm very curious how that's gonna play out. Shall we talk about some more characters? Yes. What character? Halsey. Yes, Halsey. <laughs> I've been waiting for this one. Okay. First off, she doesn't have a bion uh, bionicle hand yet. Yeah, I thought she would make one, but she didn't. She did. Maybe she didn't have time yet. Yeah, or maybe what's her what's his face? Uh, Jewel. Whatever. The hand of the didact. Yeah, Jewel. Yeah, Jewel. Yeah, what if, what if he was like, no, I'm not going to let you do that. Well, I mean, she's no longer in his custody. I know, but... You yeah, so what I'm saying? Not, she yeah, have during that time when she's in the yeah. UNSC. So same. maybe she'll have one by Halo 6? That'd be cool. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm sure she, she can get one, because those do exist in the universe. 
cat had one. Yeah, exactly. I think she would actually grow an arm for herself, like a an actual oh, human yeah, flesh. Oh, yeah, maybe. Arm. That's what I would think she would do, and then reattach it surgically and whatnot. And uh, speaking of more characters, first off, Palmer. Um, I feel like they could have done more with her. They most certainly could have done more. Especially she was just like a background character. We didn't see her fight at all, really. Yeah, and you didn't see uh, Crimson? No Crimson, yeah. Oh, that would have been... It would have been nice to see Crimson. What was the other Spartan assault team? A uh, Majestic. Majestic. But that was you. Yeah, ma okay. No, that so was the, the that one. character. Yeah. I don't, I don't care if that one's in there. Okay, so we we'll ignore Majestic, but definitely Crimson. The same Crimson. Or at least hearing a reference to it would have been pretty yes. cool. I didn't even think about that too. you just brought it up. Yeah, hearing a reference to that would be cool. Yeah. I would have liked to see Palmer more now. Here, I would have liked to see... You, you mentioned reference? Yeah. I would have been cool with them mentioning Majestic. But actually showing Palmer and Crimson in combat. And just references to Majestic. Yeah. Like maybe uh, Crimson talking amongst themselves like, Hey, we gotta beat Majestic yes. to the objective or something like that. That would be cool. Um, so, I'm pre that's pretty much all the characters. Tom well, Lasky, awesome character. like him yeah. as a... Do you want to talk about the AI that's on Infinity? What's his name? I don't know his name. Love that AI. Yeah. He, he didn't go rogue, which was awesome. What? You sure about that? You think he's gonna go rogue? Here's the thing. If, this is something I've been thinking about. On when they were talking about Cortana being the bad guy, he kind of threw a fit. Yeah. And well, to be fair, he didn't know what was going on. He was he was completely in the dark. He had no info, so right. he was just trying to get information. Yeah. But here's the thing. And then Cortana found them. Yeah. How did she find them? Uh, let's see. Hmm. How did she find them? <sighs> to be fair, it could just be put up to Forerunner technology. It very well it, could be as simple as that. It could be. There is a reason why I think he isn't going to go rogue, though, with the other AIs. Because why wouldn't he just pledge his allegiance and then just... Then, and stop the Infinity from escaping. There's no reason to drag it out. I, I do see that point. Yeah, because 343 think... is really good at storytelling and the campaigns. I absolutely love them at, with their with their story mode for Halo, the direction they're taking it. Halo 4 was an amazing campaign. Halo 5, absolutely amazing campaign as well. So I don't see them going, like, in Halo 6, all of a sudden, like, halfway through, he goes rogue. Just randomly. Like, oh, haha, we fooled you as a plot twist type thing. Just because that plot twist doesn't make sense. Right. I don't see 343 taking that direction. But they could. They could, yeah. They could. I'm I just don't see it. I'm throwing it as a possibility. I don't think he's going to go around. Okay. But it is a possibility. And I would like to know, wait, maybe closer to, when Halo 6 comes out, I want to see what happens on Earth. What? Like, the AI... what the aftermath is of uh, Cortana and the other AIs taking over, essentially? Right. Yeah, I want to see, and not just Earth, but like, Everywhere else, too, because... Well, they don't have a lot of known places, really. No, no, no. I mean, all the other aliens, the grunts, the hunters... Well, I meant, because they're... I mean, like, Earth relies a lot on technology. Even, oh, yeah, I know. Even in this world? Yeah, yeah. In real life. So, if technology just starts taking over, I'd like to see that played out. Kind of. Yeah. It'd be interesting if all the AIs got, like, the human AIs... Uh, were put into, like, Promethean bodies, and, like, those were boss fights that you could do. Which is really cool, actually. But the boss fights in this campaign? Mm, yeah. Uh, that that was interesting. I, I In Halo 3, there was a boss fight where you fight 343 Guilty Sparks, but you just shoot a laser at him, and yeah. that's it. Halo 4, you kind of just walked up to the didact and... Uh, yeah, I was yeah. kind of anticlimactic. I know, you just activated... You walked up to the nuke and activated it, and... Yeah, no, but there the wasn't Dynac really... Dynac lived, though. Yeah, yeah, well, we won't go into that since it's not in the game. Alright. But... It's okay. In this one, the boss fights... It, it was really weird. It gave me, like, the sense of uh, an RPG when you're fighting the boss, but, like, in an FPS type thing. You don't thing. like RPGs. I don't mind it. They're alright. Or, not necessarily... Alright, think Zelda, then. <laughs> it's still an RPG. Zelda? Zelda. I didn't know you played a lot of Zelda. I played the Wind Waker. The Wind Waker. Yeah, I didn't have any complaints. But when you're, like, fought, fighting one of the boss monsters at the end of a dungeon, that's what it kind of reminded me of for some reason. By the way, I hate the Warden. You hate the Warden. <laughs> and I don't hate him because it was, like, a bad character design or anything. He was just so annoying showing up all those times. Oh, man. Just imagine how Chief must have felt when he had to fight 300 of them. Exaggeration. 
Oh, uh, the cutscene. Cut yeah, that was yeah, <laughs> not fun. I would have hated that. Fighting three on though that was you. I don't know if you would have gone through that if it weren't for me. Oh, I would have found the incineration. You would, cannon. you would have found the incineration cannon, and but you were you were freaking out. You were like, how am I supposed to fight three? Yeah, I'm three of them popped up, and I was like, <gasps> how am like, I gonna do this? Like, Grab the incineration cannon, charge it up. Yeah, charge it. Up. Make sure you charge it. <laughs> It's like okay, but it worked. Yeah. Um, the uh, I'm glad they gave us a Promethean air vehicle as well in the campaign, and right. which is also going to be in uh, Forge Customs matchmaking, all that fun stuff. But uh, the Promethean vehicle is actually really fun to use, and the evade on it. You know how the Banshee has like the roll, mm -hmm. the evade for that one. It just like shoots backwards. It's really cool. Very cool vehicle. Tons of fun to use. All in all, it was a really great and awesome, amazing campaign. Uh, is there... Oh, you want 10 out of 10 is what I'd give it. Yeah. 8. To each in their own. Also, I would like to say, as because we know that we're in a trilogy right now. This is the second of the... The second campaign of the second trilogy. Yeah, um, I'd like to say something about that real fast. Yeah, go for it. You know, everyone's saying it's a trilogy. I thought they said it's not a trilogy, it's a saga. It could go beyond 3. I recall them being No, no, it's that. a Reclaimer trilogy. Oh, they did say Saga. Did say I think it's only going to be three within the Reclaimer series, but they're going to make more Halos. They oh, already yeah, have plans to make more Halos. I, but I recall I recall someone mentioning that it's the Reclaimer Saga, not the trilogy, and that someone from 343 said that it might be more than three games. If that's the case, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. But let's I, just go with the assumption of three right. right now. It was a very good... As a... Like a... I understand it was like a mid-connection type thing, so it was going to leave off on a cliffhanger. So I'm glad I went in with that kind of expectation, so I wouldn't be too disappointed. Like, ah, oh, I need more closure type thing. But um, as a as a middle story ground, it filled in a lot of information. It tied up a lot of loose ends. Oh, I forgot a character. We forgot a bunch of characters. O32. 032 from the installation. Oh, the, the purple... Installation? Yeah, I forgot the actual name of it. Love that so much better than three four three guilty spark. Yes, it's a very good, very good AI. Really cool. <laughs> I, I'm glad. I'm glad they introduced another, a very cool AI like that. I'm glad. It kind of reminds me. Back. Yeah, that too. It kind of reminds me of Cortana. I know. And I feel like it felt like that's this is the Cortana for for, for Fire Team Osiris. Yes, and that it was kind of needed, especially with uh, Cortana going. Going rogue, rogue like that, yeah. yeah, and not chief going rogue. <laughs> oh, also the 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 uh, the whole marketing for this whole game was absolutely phenomenal. Oh yes, I love the marketing. Yes, and uh, the fact that the game didn't exactly match up to what I thought was going to happen with the like, marketing that was disappointing for me. It was it wasn't disappointing. It was just like oh. Well, it wasn't what I expected, but I absolutely loved it. <laughs> just think, I was expecting to see a whole lot more lock versus. Chief. chief, and it was a lot more chief once. missions too. I was hoping for more chief missions. There is more lock missions, but to be fair, the chief missions are longer, with the exception of the last two missions. I like how they gave each team a last mission, if you will, right? With each of them being a long type of last mm -hmm. mission, so that was nice. And I'm glad they ended it with chief, or chief's playable mission. It was also really interesting to have like three. What, what are you talking about? What, why are you giving me that look? Intended with chief's playable mission. Didn't it? No. They're trapped. Oh, no, it did end with lock. I just got it mixed up. I most certainly would have preferred a cheap ending. Wow, I got it mixed up. Wow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, this is awkward. <laughs> yeah, I would have preferred to end it with cheap. So. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> uh, I was going to say something else. Oh, yeah. I was really wanting to see more fight. They did ha I did enjoy the one fight they had and would have preferred more. Yeah, well, it is what it is. The, the game was marketed. This is such lock versus chief, and they were only fighting at one point, <laughs> and most of the game was uh, lock piecing together what chief was up to. Right. It was well. It was helping the arbiter. Yeah, which I love. And then helping chief. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, this game came in three parts. Uh, hunt down Chief, help the Arbiter, help Chief. Yes. But and while they were helping the Arbiter, they were still going after Chief. 
Right. And then when they but walked they up to Chief, him. well, no, they were going after him. So because they went up to Chief, they're like, "You realize Cortana is on your side or whatever?" And they're like, "We know." So they're like, "Yeah." Oh, okay. Well. Okay, we'll help you now. <laughs> That's not how that happened. See, the problem is, if Chief was would have been like, "No, we're siding with Cortana. It doesn't matter." Then they they would have continued hunting. They would have continued fighting. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. But, but right at the start, they tried for diplomatic. Yeah. They didn't go for the hunt. Yeah. It is what it is. I, I like the story mode. Okay. Are, oh. are we doing this in two parts, by the way? Campaign and then gameplay? The story camp gameplay? Or are we just doing it all in one? What are you talking about gameplay? Like, how it felt playing. No, we can include that in. Okay. Uh, well, I, you didn't really play it, though, but... Oh, I, I've seen the gameplay. Oh, okay. From you, and I've heard you talk. Okay. I've heard several people talk. Okay. Uh, I, I have a lot to say about the gameplay. Okay, go. Um, right. First off, you want to talk about the ground pound? I have to you say... You can't talk about the ground pound. I No, I pulled it off a few times. A even few today. times. Even today, I used it in Warzone. Um, I use it on like the hunters and stuff just to you do some damage. You failed against the hunters. What are you talking about? Is it with the ground pound? When? Every time you, you play the campaign, you... Tr I'm not talking about the campaign. You just said the hunters. I said the hunters in Warzone. There's hunters in Warzone? Yeah. Okay. If there's AIs in Warzone. I didn't think there'd be hunters. Yeah, you can have... There's hunters, there's the Promethean Knights. There's even the, uh... The Warden is in Warzone. <laughs> <laughs> but are, did you seriously managed to do the ground pound in Warzone take out hunters, but you couldn't do it in the campaign? I didn't kill them, I just dealt damage. <laughs> um, I have to say the ground pound is definitely something that takes some getting used to. Right, I heard other things. I heard, like, man, this is really useful too, real easy to adapt to. I think it's something that just... Because when I jump in the air, my first instincts as I'm going down is to shoot. Like a punch. Or a punch, yes, but I don't want to hover in the air and then go down. That's not That's not how I play. My style is bumper jumper where I go jumping around, which messed me up. <laughs> this is hilarious. You, I don't know if you, you didn't see this. Um, I didn't? This was today while I was playing. Okay. Um, okay. My my uh, when I play bumper jumper, I like to jump around a lot. I like to be mobile. I like to move, which I'm glad they have thruster pack as like a default thing. Right, you were always on that thruster. Yep. Tail four. Yep. And uh, I changed the controller layout slightly for the bumper jumper so that I double tap instead of hold to do the clamber. Mhm. Mm so I jump. I uh, this is on I think it was Pegasus or Orion, one of the two. And there's like a stairway thing, and it's got the railing. So I'm jumping over the railing, and there's another guy behind them, and I'm starting to shoot at him. And I'm doing the shooting, I'm starting to hit him. I land on the stair. Like, the railing part. Okay. So, my na my next thing to do would be to jump after I land, to jump up. It counted it as a clamber and moved me into the clamber animation while I'm getting shot at. I'm like, no, no, I can't shoot him. And it caused me to die. So that's like, uh, I have to watch out for that now. But, um... I was going to point out the, the amount of grenades you threw. Oh, yeah. Because it's because of the smart links. The smart... Oh, whoops. The smart link, or mm -hmm. whatever it's called, where you can zoom in with pretty much any weapon. Because of the way the animation is done now, my mindset was into, like, Call of Duty, mm -hmm. Star Wars Battlefront, yep. uh, Battlefield. So I'm hitting the trigger to zoom in, because that's what it is in those games. Yeah. And here I am, logging grenades across the map, killed myself at one point with a grenade. That I, th I have to think that was the hardest thing to overcome, just because I was associating that animation with that control Here's scheme. Here's the thing, I've always used that control scheme. Yeah, so you're all set, you're good. It, 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 now you know how I feel, Ricky? Switching back to the 360? What do you, oh, because there wasn't fish stick on the... Uh, on the Halo Reach. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I kept punching, throwing grenades, and I'm like, no, I'm trying to zoom in. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So, ground pound... Really cool, it's going to take me some getting used to just because of my play style. I like, mm. jump up, shoot down. You're great right with the clamor, though. Oh, I love the clamor. You love the clamor. <laughs> I, I'll clamor it all up over that map. Mm -hmm. Anyways, um... A hydro launcher? Want to talk about that? See, they also have a plasma launcher, too. They do. I don't really care for it's either caster. of those weapons. Plasma caster. Yeah, plasma caster? I don't care for either of those. Which, by the way, plasma caster is totally a weapon from uh, Fallout New Vegas. Mm. <laughs> I just don't care for them. I'd rather not use them. <laughs> All right. Do you like them? Um, no, I don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> From what I've seen of them, it's just, I don't see the. So I see many... the use of it. It's just, 
it's not my playstyle. Right. I'm the same way. I'm a plasma pistol guy normally. I don't. I don't think you're gonna like the plasma pistol. I I haven't seen much of the plasma pistol, which confused me because I'm like, why are people using the plasma pistol? Isn't that a great weapon? Nope. No. <laughs> it's still EMPs. It's still EMPs. There's a lot of things that make me kind of want to stay away from it. First off, the design looks kind of bland compared to previous designs. So that that's one thing. So I don't really like... I'm not too thrilled with the design. Okay, that's fair. Um, the colors are weird like offset pink and not purple. It's very weird. Okay. Or I should say offset purple and not purple. Whatever. Yeah. It doesn't have like the cool glowing stuff on it anymore. Um, and when you fire it for the overcharge, mm -hmm. it feels like it takes longer for the cooldown. And like your hands go like way out, and like you're shaking both hands like you got burnt. And I, I was just like, that looks a little odd, but okay, whatever. All right. I just uh, personally, me, I didn't like it. You might like it. You hardly ever use the, you hardly like the plasma pistol, anyways. Yeah, I know. But <laughs> so except Halo CE, I do enjoy the plasma. You do pistol enjoy the plasma pistol on CE, but yeah. I don't think you started using it until you saw I was using it. Yeah, and I was like, wait, this is actually pretty good. <laughs> I don't think you've ever given the plasma pistol. A Probably in any other game. See, when I was playing campaign last night, I was actually like trying to give as much weapons as possible a chance to use. I I gave pretty much all of them. I think I used all of them. Uh. The only. No, I, I definitely used pretty much all. Of them. I, yeah, I'm trying to think of what we didn't use because I'm sure there's one. I just can't think of any. Mm hmm. Plasma rifle's not in this game anymore. No. No. I'm pretty sure I use every weapon. Every weapon's in campaign, all the turrets. Uh, I didn't use all the vehicles, obviously. Oh, you want to talk about that mongoose? That mongoose is cool. <laughs> it shoots, like, grenades out, almost. Or, like, an explosive projectile. It's really cool. And how your teammate gets on it? Oh, yeah, they, like, hop on the back, and then they sit, like, you guys will end up sitting back-to-back, -back, but then they have to, like, reach over and shoot. It's more like a seat now, compared to, like, in Reach, where they kind of hop on. Hold on and stand and then Compared shoot. to Reach, you said? Halo Reach, yeah. Or Halo 3. Or Halo or 3. Or Halo Any. Yeah, or Halo 4, yeah. Well, in Halo 4, actually, I feel like there was more of a sitting animation. So it kind of threw me off for a moment. I was like, wait, what? And, but I was like, that's actually kind of cool. <laughs> and it makes shooting from behind a lot easier. Like, shooting yeah. at something behind, you just kind of have to reach over to shoot from the front. Did or you, actually, no, I've never sat in my seat, so I don't know how it guessing. works. This is a guess. You're, I'm, I'm sure you're right, but you're guessing. Yes, it's, this is a stretch. But, um... That's how we should test. Yeah, we will. Hmm. Eventually. Yeah. But uh, that's pretty much all we really had to discuss, right? Unless you had a few last things, because we got to wrap it up. Uh, yeah, I, was, I just wanted to say that we are going to be releasing videos on the Halo campaign. Yes. Actual gameplay. Yes. Uh, we are probably going to do int intel videos, skull videos, uh... I'm going to do some of the card openings, the rec pack card openings, because I like card openings, so I'm going to do that. I'm, I'll just, like, stack up a bunch of packs and then open them. I'm sure all gameplay captured will be from Ricky, because I'm more the information guy. Indeed. <laughs> and so, uh, for those videos, I'll probably be next to him telling him where the skull is. Yes. Most likely. <laughs> But, uh, <laughs> that's pretty much it. Yeah, yeah. unless you had any last minute things you wanted to say. I don't think I do. I'm sure there are stuff I'd like to say, and I can't think of them right now. I'm sure I'm missing some character I really wanted to talk about or something. <laughs> like the lack of Sergeant Johnson in this game. No. You mean the <laughs> dead guy? Yeah, I know, I know. But thanks for watching, guys. We appreciate you sticking through this review all the way to the end. Mm -hmm. If we didn't say this, there were spoilers. We said it. Okay, cool. <laughs> we, we we also gave some other spoilers. They killed Omidor. Danny! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, guys, before Danny ruins the next, like, ten games and movies that are coming out, we shall see you guys next time. He kills Dumbledore already killed.